Hi. I've been having a lot of interesting conversations this year so far. I've had conversations about um, the internal war between uh, rivet counters and whackers. I've been having conversations about list building and, and skills and um, a lot of nice comments, a lot of very thought, well thought out comments and questions and and they lead to conversations and this is really the conversations that are interesting, right? Um, you guys never have to agree with me in anything I say. I just um, the actual saying of it is sometimes what's good. We're having conversations. That's really brilliant. Now I got a a series of questions from a guy called Mason. Mason is one of the players that went that attended uh, Warzone Atlanta, and Mason asked me about Death Stars. That made me think. Of course, it did. I've made a PowerPoint presentation because why not? That's that's a thing, uh, right? So here we go. This is the Q and A about Death Stars based on Mason's questions. And Mason, um, he wrote me a long email. Uh, I'm not going to read it all of it, but but he sums up his questions at the end, which was really nice of you, Mason. Thank you so much. So Mason asks basically. Are there any strategies when it comes to using a Death Star gimmicky theater list that might work that I know of? Um, that's the first one. Would cutting back on unit effectiveness be worth it? Um, there's a point reduction if you go inexperienced instead of regular or veteran. Um, and and Mason is specifically asking about a uh, 150 um, Panther list, theater list, where you take a, a panther, uh, an assets panther, panther, so that it's it's painted in the colors of, of American uh, tanks. Um, what about other unit choices? And would there be any scenario in which the in which a list like this could perform, or are there any specific changes you would make to this kind of list to increase the performance? Now, in order to talk about this. I'm going to have to go to a dark, dark place. I'm going back to 40k. Um, many of us come from 40k. And when I was playing 40k back in the Middle Ages, um, I was playing the Eldar Jet Seer Council. That was the hardest unit you could make. It had a 2 plus re rollable, invulnerable save. So everything that hit it. I could re-roll on a two plus. Uh, so basically my unit was invulnerable. Uh, I mean, you were pouring at least 36 shots into it to kill one of my dudes, which was just insane. It could tank anything. And at the same time, it had a boatload of attacks. I can't remember if it was three or four per model. So it was a huge amount of attacks and it was highly mobile. And it, it even had a trick where I could I could move it into combat and then I could bounce out if I wanted to or let it stay in combat if I wanted to do that. So it was it was an amazing unit. And then of course a new edition came and messed it all up and I quit 40k in in a rage. Um, but that was a Death Star. That was one of the Death Stars that I've run. Um, and it really really worked. I won a lot of games using that Death Star uh, build, and Death Stars, uh, and and I had players complaining to me that that the game is broken and this is just uh, it's no fun anymore. So that is what a Death Star can do when you have a list that's really it feels like the opponent hasn't got a, uh, a chance. I'll get back to what it is that Death Stars do, but that was one of the lessons I took from 40k. That was that this is what a Death Star is. It's something that can attack a lot, can tank everything you throw at it, and is very, very mobile. Um, I've also played Infinity the game, and in, in Infinity there is something called tags. Tags are huge robots, they're basically tanks uh, on legs, and and they have very, very strong armor, what's called in, in Infinity called is called arm and BTS. Uh, there are two types of armor in, in Infinity, and they typically had very, very strong weapons as well. Um, so, like HMG type weapons or or rocket launcher weapons, 
um, maybe in clo even close combat weapons. Um, some of them had camo, and camo in Infinity is a big thing, a really, really good mechanic. Uh, some of your models can basically become invisible, um, and, and they are invisible for the opponent, so the, the actual player can't see your models, which is just amazing. Um, they're very fast. They had a large movement because they were big robots. They had large legs, so they were fast. And the, the thing that really um, made them a thing where you could do tag racing um, was that in Infinity, you had something called order monkeys because each each unit you had, each in Infinity, it's individual models, had one order, but you didn't, didn't need to spend it on that one model. You could spend it however you like. So you could spend all of your orders on one unit. So you could pour all your orders into your tag, your Death Star. And if you did it well, you could push that Death Star into the opponent's um, deployment zone and start cleaning his back line up. Just murdering one model after another. Um, and that is the tag push or the tag race. And, and that is a Death Star build as well. Now, what have I learned from these two games about how to run Death Stars? One, that there is strategies for Death Stars, and they work on different levels. Um, they work on a physical level by actually destroying your opponent's army. Your Death Star moves in, and it starts eating up enemy units. Um, and for most games, that will mean that the opponent has less assets in coming turns to to actually try and win the game. So, so there is sort of a... Um, a first strike uh, unit often and and that means that they need to be very very destructive these death stars they need to to be absolutely you need to be absolutely sure that each turn you're killing something and if you're doing that then then your death star sort of has the right um, qualities uh, the, because that's the first thing it really needs it needs to be very very deadly at the same time, it needs to be very, very tanky. It needs to be practically almost unstoppable. And and for Infinity, the tags were not unstoppable. There were uh, ways to get around um, and, and stop a tank, but they often involved quite a lot of skill and predictive power. Um, or the, the right list. Um, and the same can be said for, uh, for 40k. You, you needed quite a lot of of ability to be able to not just panic and and have because or or you needed quite a lot of of shots and and what actually changed 40k for me was that there the, the um games workshop came out with a sort of a type of weapon i can't remember what they were called anymore but that ignored invulnerable saves so all of a sudden my death star was was well it was completely open. They had no save, because my my the type of save that I had was suddenly non-applicable, um, and that absolutely killed my Death Stars, uh, Death Star days of 40k. The final thing that makes um, so so tankiness and destructiveness. The final thing that makes a good Death Star in both games is that they're a distraction. They distract and panic the opposing player, so that that's a psychological effect, not a physical effect in the game. It's a psychological effect. The player will start panicking, will start pouring resources into trying to stop you when you can't be stopped, into trying to not get destructed, uh, destroyed when you are destroying him. And those resources, and those the, that panic, is what actually wins you the game. Because they will lose focus, and your units, for me in 40k, that would be like a few jet bikes with Guardian, Eldar Guardians on them that would jump onto objectives or whatever it was that was winning the game, right? And I could do that in complete safety, because the enemy was pouring his whole army into my Death Star. The Death Star might die at one point. Okay, didn't really matter, because at that point I had already won the game. Um... So, so that is the three 
things that make Death Stars work. Destruction, distraction, and the being unstoppable or tanky. Now, why don't they work in bold action? One, there are no units in bold action that are really that deadly, um, where you can be absolutely sure of wiping off enemy units. There are some units that come close, but uh, it, it's not it's not at the level of my Eldar Jet Bike Seer Council, um, where I could be 99% sure that whatever I hit, I was going to kill. Um, and most units in bold action are not deadly to all targets as well. So they, they can be very deadly towards infantry or very deadly towards tanks, but they're not deadly to everything, which is what the um, the Death Stars of Infinity and the Death Stars of 40k were. They were deadly to everything. Everything they hit, they could kill. Um, that's not actually true of bold action. Most units in bold action have like one thing they're really good at killing, and then there's something else that they're not. So I've yet to see a unit that's good against all types of enemy targets, and I don't think they actually exist in bold action. A further limitation for Death Stars is that in bold action, you can only offend six to seven targets per game. Um, that is not actually true in Infinity, for instance, because if you had a typical list, a tag list in Infinity, you had maybe 10 um, models in it. So that would mean 10 orders. That would mean each turn you had, you could possibly potentially offend 10 enemy models with that one tag because you're pouring all your orders into the tag. Um, and you have three turns. So that's 30 enemy models you could offend in a game. Nobody really did that because uh, you spend some turns just moving. But still, that is a potential 30 models uh, or 30 enemy units you could offend, 30 enemy targets. And that's not, not true of bold action. Even some units where you can split fire, like the Darker Steward, um, where you can split fire on multiple targets, typically one of your split fires will be weaker than the other. So a Darker Steward will have 13 shots in its hole and 5 shots in a coaxial. Then you might even pop a top and, and shoot uh, at a further, but that would be a pintle mounted MMG at further 5 shots. So those 5 shots are not as strong as the 13 shots in the hole, right? Um, and you're weakening your hull, the offending action that you're taking, because now it's just 13 instead of 18 shots against a certain target. Um, so, and and typically, if you have like one gun that's really strong and can kill the target, well, you're only hitting on three plus, aren't you? That means in six turns, you're hitting maybe four times. And then you're not even counting in whether or not they go down or whether or not there there is any cover, and suddenly you're just killing two targets in a game. And and that is what kills most of the um, the Death Star possibilities in this game is that they have one main gun, and that main gun can only shoot six to seven times, and then it misses, and then there's cover, and then the enemy goes down, and you're not killing anything. And so you can have games where your very, very expansive, expensive uh, tiger tank shoots and shoots and shoots and kills absolutely nothing. And that's a lot of points to sink into something that is not killing anything. So you're not being destructive enough. Uh, units in bold action are not destructive enough to be Death Stars. I also think that... Um, People who play bold action don't really panic uh, because they know that Death Stars in bold action are not deadly enough, they're not destructive enough, and they have learned to deal with them. Because nothing in bold action is unpinnable. And for each round that your Death Star unit spends rallying pins, that is one more round where it doesn't shoot. And you only have six rounds to shoot. Seven. 
Um, so, so for me, when I'm fighting against someone who brings a heavy tank, for instance, I will typically not care at all about that tank. I'll not take it into account. I won't do anything because I know that it can only have six or seven shots. Most of those it will miss. I will go down if it shoots directly at me most of the time. And if not, I'll use something like anti-tank weapons, whatever. It doesn't matter if I kill it. I just need to pin it. Two pins and it's out for at least a turn. Um, and it's even less likely to hit me. So, so um, it's it's really really difficult not to to uh, to panic an opponent here, to distract an opponent enough that your Death Star will be um, deadly enough. Nothing is unpinnable. At the same time, the order dice mechanic of um, game, uh, sorry, of bolt action means that you can only activate once. Um, so that limits how many times you can offend, as I said before, with um, Infinity, where you could offend multiple times. You can only offend once. You can only move that unit once. Unless you're playing with special characters, then there are certain Tiger um, German uh, Panzer aces who can activate twice, which is really cool. Um, and I have played with those in, in certain friendly games, and they're really cool. They still don't work, though. They're not deadly enough still, but they're really fun. Um, so the order dice mechanic is playing against you here, as is points versus synergy. Now, in for instance, if we go back to 40k, um, the synergy here was that that Jetsia Council had a lot of different parts, and each part wasn't as good uh, on its own, but when they came together, I was putting a, a, a dark Eldar um, special character into the Seer Council because he gave me that hit and run tactic uh, bonus. And I was uh, putting a Farseer into the Seer Council as well because he gave me certain powers that I wanted. And then I gave the, the warlocks, warlocks in the Seer Council, uh, I made sure that they had that certain power because that gave me something. All of that is synergy. Now, if uh, in, in Infinity, the synergy comes between the Order Monkeys and the Death Star, right? But in, in uh, Bolt Action, you don't really have a lot of synergies. There's not a lot. You have the synergy between your, uh, your uh, Nation Special Rules and your units. Um, but there's really, really very, very few units that affect other units in their vicinity. And that means that there's not a lot of possibilities of having synergy in bold action. It's really very, very limited in this system. And it's maybe one of the things that I actually miss about bold, uh, uh, about 40K. I sort of like that. That that was that was just a nice little extra mental exercise of you trying to figure out how to do that. But it's not there in bold action at all. Um, you do have like some commissars uh, that, that means that you your uh, inexperienced dude shoots at, at not minus one, and you have some German units that have some effects, but the synergies here are not for Death Stars. They're not really working for Death Stars. Um, so, so you would need um, like a special uh, captain who can tell your tank to to move again or something like that. Then we're talking Death Star possibilities, but as is. They're not really there. There are no synergies, and the points are just very, very expensive for the units that you need. And and because the order dice mechanic favors high order dice counts um, in bold action, then the, the the points that you're spending on a very expensive Death Star, they're detracting from your order dice count. So we do have some Death Star ish units um, like large units of veteran cavalry uh, Japanese Manchuku cavalry for instance they have tough fighter they have the mobility of cavalry and they're fanatics as well tough fighter fanatic perfect combo really good and there's a bit of synergy here because you can do the bonsai charge and you do have fanatic that is a synergy um, that, that, that starts we also have the Polish lances 
which are polls, which means that they get to re-roll all the tests, more, all their morale tests, they get to re-roll those. Um, and they are at the same time very, very good in close combat, but they are a bit of a, a glass cannon because they can't really take hits back. Um, Mongolians as well uh, can can be a, a little bit Death Star-ish like. Um, you can give them anti-tank grenades and they are deadly towards enemy tanks. And at the same time, large units of veteran Mongolians are really good skirmish units and they can fight close combat as well. Um, so they, they, they can offend almost any unit, um, is what I'm saying here. So they, they sort of make up for one of the lacks that I was talking about earlier. There are also some medium tanks like uh, OT-34, uh, uh, which has both a medium anti-tank gun, coaxial MMG, and a whole mounted flamethrower. So you it becomes more deadly, right? Um, the problem here is, again, nothing is unpinnable and it's expensive. Um, there are also certain specialist units. I would uh, maybe point to uh, body armored engineers with a flamethrower and SMGs. They are very, very hard to kill, so they are very, very unstoppable, but it's not mobile like the other two units, um, the other two Death Stars that I was talking about in Infinity and in 40K. It's not very mobile. It's the opposite of mobile. It's really not movable at all. We also have Gurkhas and uh, Kalkapasha, which can be Death Star-ish, um, but none of them are unkillable. They're not unstoppable. Just pour shots into them and they will die. Um, the Steward as well, because it can offend multiple units. It is extremely deadly towards infantry. But again, it's it's just an 8-plus tank and it's vulnerable in the side, so it's, it's not unkillable and it's definitely not unpinnable. Um, so again, destructive, hard to kill, multiple targets. That's where they all sort of fall down on one of those counts. Some of them are hard to kill. Some of them are very destructive. Some of them can take on multiple targets, but they're not all of them, all of this at the same time. So in short, the strategy is to make... Um, their stars work is order monkeys and min maxing. You need to have more order dice in your list, otherwise you're going to lose just based on the amount of order dice you have. Um, which means that the rest of your army is going to be weak um, and vulnerable, and the enemy is going to focus on killing that and ignoring your expensive tank. Veterancy, don't ever buy an inexperienced Death Star. Inexperienced units are hordes, they're there to die and kill something while they're dying. They're not there to be Death Stars. Inexperienced Death Stars become less deadly, especially tanks because you're shooting at minus one and you're already not hitting for most of the game. And now you're shooting at minus one as well. Doesn't work. Um, so the units that you have to look at is uh, unit, uh, that units that boost your order dice and, and you're only focusing on that. And you're, you're trying to get as much killy power into your list while doing that, so you're going to have to look at small teams. Um, you're going to have to take a full complement of small teams if you possibly can. Um, you're also looking at five-man infantry units with just rifles and maybe even inexperienced, maybe even shirkers, um, which are not deadly at all. And missions. What missions can work? Well, if you have single objective missions, that's where your uh, Death Star shines. But Unfortunately, uh, those single objective missions are out of most competitive packs. So you're not going to see Death, Death Star lists doing well at any competitive tournament in the foreseeable future. Um, but in single objective missions, what you can do is, so like demolition, for instance, you park your Panther on your objective because it's just a point on the map. And now the enemy is going to have to come to you which means that they're going to have to move up to the panther. And at the same time, they're going to have to try and kill the panther, which is very difficult. Um, so you just go on ambush and wait for the enemy. And as soon as they pop their heads out, you shoot them because now they're out there. Um, so so it, it sort of makes up for some of the lacks that a uh, Death Star can have. But it's still not good. It just means that you're going to get a draw, right? You could also try and push your panther 
onto the enemy's objective. Um, this is even better when you have uh, objective missions like top secret or like the one where you have one objective in the center. If you can get your panther on top of that, you might not be able to take it, but you've definitely contested it. And the enemy has to try and take you off the objective because otherwise they're not within three inches of it. So you're winning by default. Um, so I'm sorry, these were not the answers you were hoping for, I know. Um, for the foreseeable future, I am not advocating for anyone to take Death Stars. I would want uh, there to be a third edition where Death Stars became a little bit more viable especially with some synergy units. Um, units that can interact with tanks, for instance, um, would be a good idea. But as it is now, I'm sorry, no. That was it. Mason, I hope you found my answers useful, even though they were not the ones you were looking for. I will see you in the next video. Cheers.